Hello and welcome back to Simple or Difficult. In this video, we are going to be looking at the Corona VFP. Okay, the Corona VFP, the VFP actually stands for Virtual Frame Buffer. It is where the image you are rendering displays inside 3ds Mask Corona when you are working on it. As you can see, this image is displaying a lounge, a bar lounge that I am working on. So basically, the reason why you have this stuff over here is to display what you're working on. It's like the monitor of your render project. All right, now, so there are tools that Corona added in this VFP to enable you to maximize the work you are putting out there. All right, so um, that is what we are going to be talking about in this video. So the first one is um, save button. Okay, if you want to save out this image, let's say I, I did the, the production render and I want to now save it out. I can just come here and click. Okay, when you click, it is, it is going to save out the scene. Okay, it's going to save out the scene that is active here. But let, first of all, let's even talk about when you look here, you're going to see a triangle button. Okay, you're going to see it here too. You're going to see it here too. All right. So whenever I see that stuff, whenever I see this triangle in any button, that means that there are other options that are embedded within that button. So all you have to do is click and hold, and then those options will reveal themselves. And then you just go down while still holding down, you slide down to that button and then release. Okay, so we are now going to talk about what all this button inside the save button does for you so if you just click it once okay it is going to bring out this dialog box for you to save only the active render channel or render pass what is displaying here it is what is going to save for you so you are now going to like rename it set the format you want and then okay override your gamma if you want to override the gamma if not you can use automatic it still works well okay but i like to override it to 2.2 okay when you do that you can now go ahead and save all right so when you hold down the save button and then you click on save all now this is going to this is going to save all the render passes that are in this scene so if i just go ahead and, and say um restaurant like so and i set it to png and then override okay as you can see you can see you have all this stuff saved out for you you see the codes you see the rb1 you see the op like you see the entrance all these things they are all saved out for you okay just by clicking on save all all right so if i should do this and then do the save csr cxr is a proprietary format of corona renderer so i can just come here and save restaurant and then save it okay so when i open it are going to see the csr file all right this is the csr file it's a file format that you use to do various things you can use it to edit your image in the corona image editor you can use it to load it back in and work on your live mix or your denoiser you can also use it to resume your render okay so that's that for the save button let's go over to the max this max copies if when you click on this button that you are seeing max on click on it it's going to like copy the vfb for you in a separate folder where you can now do a lot of things so you can now use it to do compare and contrasting if that is what you want to do you can see the details the gamma is 2.2 that will help you when you want to export your own so this copy ctrl c is actually very interesting too you can use it to copy the render you have here in your frame buffer and paste it inside your editing software like like photoshop and then start editing editing it immediately so i can just do ctrl c here then open up my photoshop and paste it in here okay you can see the file is inside here all i had to do is copy it from there and then come here and post it then from here now i can now start doing my adjustment layers and all was not and all was not so the next thing we are going to talk about is refresh when i click on this refresh it is going to especially when you're doing production renders and all that it's going to refresh your frame buffer for you the erase button clears everything on your frame buffer and makes it, it will basically make it black like this okay so it is very useful when you need to clean up the ram all right, so you can see these two here. The two here gets rid of the two by the right hand side. So when you click it, it goes away. You click it again, it comes back in. All right, so we have region. Let's start interactive again. We have the region. Region is what we use to render parts of the images that we might want to render at that moment. 
Okay. So let's say I am working on this material. All I have to do, and I want to just focus and load this thing fast. All I have to do is just come here, draw my region render like so. Okay. You see, it is now focusing on this area. In Corona render, it's very helpful to know that you can do two regions at the same time. Okay. You can even merge it together. You can separate it. When you put the boxes together, it is going to merge. Okay. So when you want to remove this region render, all you have to do is click on this X button at the top. Okay. Or as you can see, this thing has a triangle by the side. So you click and hold, you see disable or it disables it. But when you do that disable or you can always bring it back. So when you click on region, they come back. Okay. But if you want to like remove it, remove or you can just click on this. Okay. It doesn't come back when you do that. All right. So with this pick tool now, the next one is pick tool. With this pick tool, you can select object from the Corona frame buffer. All right. I want to select this seat here. All I have to do is come here and click on it. You can see the seat is selected. If I want to select the one behind it, click on that one behind it. You can see it's selected. Next to the pick tool is the Corona render element being calculated and displayed. So next to the corona render element, you, you have your zoom buttons that you can use to like zoom in and zoom out or just go back to the normal this thing. But if you have if you are using a mouse, you can use your middle mouse button. That works very well too. So here you can see we have stop. Okay. Is it that you do stop or you do cancel? Right? When you are doing production render, if you click on stop, it is going to activate your denoiser. All right, so when I just click stop over here, watch what happens here. The noiser starts. Okay, as you can see, it is denoising. But assuming I clicked on cancel, okay, or I, I did this, it is going to stop render without kicking in the denoiser. All right, so that's that for the stop button. Then in the render, if you click and hold, you're going to see start IR, that start interactive rendering. You can see resume last. Okay, this rendering I just cancelled now. I can just re resume it from where I stopped it from. Okay, after computing sec, it is going to start from the render passes where I stopped. You can see it's starting from render pass four. Okay, so I can instead of just like clicking stop, I can just come over here and click cancel, and that takes away the denoising ability of the scene. So if I'm to do resume file after I have shut down the system and I'm, I'm back, it resumes the file as you can see here it's going to resume it from where i stopped which is the render pass i think four or five all right so on these tools over here you can see when we do this you see the tools is what this is called so on these tools over here we have important post-production tools all right we have the tone mapping tools you can add and remove more from here you can add more i can remove from here so with this you control how the exposures are in the image or how the color of the images are going to be whether they're going to be saturated or contrasty or they are going to have blackness or darkness or you know rich shadows then the bloom you know basically affects the light how the light shines out okay you know it also affects the realism of the entire thing you're doing then the sharpening and the blurring you know it is it enables you sharpen or blur your image so if i you turn it on now and i come over here and i add like three you can see the image is now sharpened okay so the denoiser is going to be active when you add it you have already talked about denoiser if you have not seen that video check it out i'll put the link in the comment and also at this left hand side over here then when you go over to the start this is where you see important information about your render okay you can see important information as uh, the denoising the rendering time okay you're going the, this is total time it lasts for the render you can see the scene you can see the primitive number of primitives you can see the lighting you know how many lights we have in this scene okay you can see number of passes you have done you can see the noise level okay to know when to stop your render okay, if you're not using automatic stop it and the history is where we do our before and after okay we just do comparison all right so i can just store this vfb okay by clicking that stuff when i click it it stores it for me let's say i do a, maybe i did something let me just select this seat and move it out a little bit okay let me just move it out a little bit like so and then i start another interactive render like that okay and then i decide to store this vfb too and what you need to know is that the two 
aspect ratio of the render has to match themselves perfectly. So I will just come over here and return this seat where it was and bring back my VFB and then do another interactive render. If not like that, it is not going to work. You can see it's saying mismatch. So I'm going to delete this particular one and then I'm going to like store this VFB. Now we don't have any issue like that. So if you want to do your comparison, let me stop this. If you want to do your comparison, come over here, left click. That makes this the A part. You come over here, you right click. That makes it the B part. So you can now drag the slider across to see the changes in the two images that you just saved. Okay, that's how you use that. Then the DR, DR is only active when you are doing distributed rendering, all right? In a situation where you connect various systems to be able to work as one, you know, to give you faster output. Maybe you're doing animation for a, an entire anim anime movie or something. You might want to like connect various workstations together to form like a very formidable system. I've never used that before. But I've read about it and I've seen people use it too. Light mix is where you have your light mix show up. From here, you can control light even after they have been rendered. All right. So you can, there are various tools that are available for you. So when you look at this, when you come over here as well, you can right click and, you know, it gives you more ability to do more things. All right. So that's it for this video. That's it for the Corona VFB. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new that you'll be using from time to time in your render now. If you did enjoy this video or if you learned something new, please share this video and then give me a like. And if you are new to this channel, if this is the first video of this channel that you are watching, welcome. Okay, hit the subscribe button if you have not already done so. And not only that, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.